Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. I wanted to do another lumber video for you guys, catch up on what's going on in the drastic reversal of predicted turn of events. Uh, here we are. Um, before we get started, make sure you guys hit that subscribe button, please. More subscribers, more content goes out to more people, the more information we can share with each other. I appreciate you guys doing that. Hit that bell for notifications if you haven't already. That will tell you when other videos come out, including our live stream, Monday evenings at 5 p.m. Mountain Daylight Time. The Building Wealth and Health series is off and running as well. Make sure you guys check out the podcast on all audio platforms as well and here on the YouTube channel. Um, so without further ado, let's get into it. Oh, by the way, uh, I know I haven't done real estate vids in a little bit, so those are coming back out next week. All the real estate guys hang in there with that. And if you got any questions in the meantime, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Uh, check out the merch on builtbybaileys.com as well. Get some of these if you want. Okay. Without further ado, here we are. Here we are, the giant reversal of lumber. Okay. What, is this, what does it mean? What's going on? Uh, what does it mean to the consumer? What does it mean to the market in general? What's happening, Shane? Please, please, please inform me. So here we are. We are looking at the chart. This is the one day chart for lumber futures. And again, remember that lumber futures, these numbers are measured in thousand board feet. Okay. So, and these are futures contracts. This is not the retail price of lumber changing hands. Okay. Keep that in mind as we kind of get into this video. Ah, oh, back in September of 2020. Yeah, remember that? I don't even want to think about that year. So here's where we, as we saw in the other videos, here's where we started seeing that drastic run. This is the point of um, panic, I'll call it, as we talked about the other videos. And then the giant run up to uh, the highest futures price ever of 1700 on May 7th, okay? Since then, we've had a giant reversal. You guys can see since that point, it's basically falling off a cliff. Now, falling off a cliff to what? Well, still not back to what I would call a normal settled uh, price per, okay? We're sitting here at, um, we jumped down to, I think it was 715. Um, yeah, 715, I'm just double checking my numbers. That's the lowest it was it has been since the second part of January, guys, okay? So before we had this crazy run, as I'm pricing out, uh, uh, construction projects, home builds. Um, I'm pricing them back in January, putting estimates together. And then this nonsense happens. And all of a sudden, literally, literally doubled or more in price. Futures contracts went up, retail followed. And suddenly my estimates for lumber were double or more on a lot of contracts. It makes me want to vomit. I know a lot of people are in the same boat. And that was um, about as most fun as I could ever have, right? It literally jumped 500% between April and May of this year. That is insane. You think about all the effect it has on the market by doing that, okay? Like I said, we hit an all-time high of 1,700 on May 7th. Since then, we've had a run back the other way. We're trying to get back in a normal channel at this point, okay? Now, I know everyone's sitting here watching this and going, but Shane, the two by fours at Home Depot are still $11, bro. What's going on? I understand that. Keep in mind, again, these are futures contracts. So futures is ahead in the future of what's happening in the market. And there's more than just that factor. There's also the fact that still little demand, like we talked about in the last video, me and personally and other people are still saying there's still on the retail side, and even for me on the wholesale side, because this is again, one more step out of the futures, the wholesalers are still priced pretty high. I'm saying, I don't wanna do them. I don't wanna buy that lumber right now. There's little demand, that's what's really happening, okay? The demand has to pick back up. Mills are still trying to catch up. And again, we talked about in the last video, all the production of all the different types and sizes of lumber, it's a lot of product to change hands, a lot of product to get caught up on. But if there's no demand, once it sits at the mill, I mean, sorry, once it sits at the, the wholesale, the distributor, if there's no one walking in like me and saying, yo, I need another, I need another order. What are they going to do with it? That's what's happening at places like Home Depot as well. There's little demand for it. 
And they're still, because you got to keep in mind, play, big box stores like Depot, Lowe's, whoever, bought that lumber at a future price, okay? So they bought it at the price of X and they're trying to sell it for Y still, which is not equating to what the futures are doing right now. And it's not helping with the fact there's very little demand still. Contrary to proper, prop, prop, wow, contrary to popular belief, sorry about that. There isn't the demand that the media is talking about. And there's the reason is because of the price. Okay. Even, even the retailer, the retail buyer is not paying 11, 12 bucks for a two by four anymore. Little tiny jobs. They don't care. But when we're getting into bigger remodels, basement finishes, even additions, the homeowner saying, I'm going to wait. And they keep coming to me and other people like me and ask me, when should I be ready to go? Well, look guys, we're at a price now where once the retail side catches back up in price, and I'll tell you how that's going to work. Um, we're going to get to a point, like I said, towards the end of this month and beginning of August where the prices may make sense again. And then you're going to see a reversal. But in the meantime, the big box stores, the retail side of it, like I said, they bought that lumber at a futures price. Okay. So they're still trying to sell it at that price, even though the futures themselves have dropped. So they're still trying to sell them at 10 or $11 with no demand. It's not going to move. Nothing's going to change. The only thing that's going to start changing is when they start dropping that price, which they're going to have to, to unload the inventory that's sitting in those stores. So keep that in mind. No demand. Lumber starts to fill in. They keep Depot and Lowe's and all those guys have bought all that lumber at a futures price. And they got to, they're trying to sell it to try and make, you know, squeeze some profit out of there. You're going to start seeing that price dip a little bit at the store, but they're still going to try and squeeze some profit out of there. Obviously they're not a for-profit business, right? They're going to get to that point where the demand won't catch up to them trying to squeeze down that price and they're going to start giving it away, right? Giving it away, which is really not giving it away. It's just, they're going to have to cut their price to like 80 to 70% of what they paid for it. So they think they're giving it away because they're not at full profit, but to us, it's still expensive. That will start to correct itself. I have also heard that some of these big box stores are thinking, and I'm just not going to use their names at this point because this is a little more hearsay. They're thinking they might just actually end up taking that excess inventory and donating it to places like Habitat for Humanity. Instead of selling it at 50% of what they paid for it, 60, 70% of what they paid for it, they're going to donate it, give it away. And then when they're buying the next section, that next shipment, they're going to be buying it at this or lower contract price, which turns around and actually takes the retail price down to a level where demand may actually pick up. Building is still going on, right? So that gap down, you will see in the same format as the futures gap down. But it's just, like I said, because the futures is ahead, it's going to take a little bit of time. All right. So what's happening with gold and lumber as we've been tracking this market move and what that really signifies. So to summarize, we've got lumber futures on the steep decline. You guys can see that we're, you know, like I said, we dipped below 715. It's the lowest since the second part of January. We've got retail still trying to squeeze out some profit on the price they paid in the future when it's really not that price now. And what's going to end up happening is they're either going to drastically cut their prices to a point where demand will pick up and people will start buying it, or they're going to give it away. Tax write-off, keep that in mind. They may benefit more by just giving it away. Now that's up for debate because there's a lot of numbers formulas that go into that, but that is kind of the thinking with these CEOs. Either way, that future expensive contract lumber price goes away. They start buying again because there's still supply out there being caught up. They buy it obviously at a lower price, a more formidable price. And all of a sudden, now we're back to a five to six dollar stick. Okay. Hopefully. Hopefully lower, but we'll see. As of right now, I'm kind of tracking to see how much more we're gonna dip. We've got some resistance that we're gonna be bouncing off, or sorry, some support we're gonna be bouncing off of. And the resistance has obviously come way down. So that's kind of what I'm showing here, okay? My candlestick pattern is my lumber futures contract. My purple, my purple 
chart right here is actually gold, okay? And like I said, I've been tracking the movement between these two for quite a while. It's, a, it's an indicator for me to use along with the VIX to discover what's going on in the overall market condition because I'm charting that along with real estate as well to see what, what's going to happen, what moves are going to happen, what's going to start declining, when do we start seeing moves back down because we will. Um, even in the real estate market, um, there's going to be some gap down starting to happen at some point. I'm not talking about a crash. I'm talking about a, more of a, a, a correction and justified correction for everything. So I've got my, basically I've got my, my support chart here. Okay. On my lumbers contracts and you can see what it's kind of running against. So we're going to actually going to push through this pretty soon and come back down as you can see. And this was based back in, this is the middle of Jan or sorry, January, June. This is when we started breaking this. And then we had this basically this fallout, right? So once we, once we push pack this support level on gold, we actually had a stream crossing again, like I've been talking about where gold and lumber futures kind of cross each other. First time was when that first move when lumber went crazy. And then the second time is right here, which was towards the end of June, we had a big stream crossing and then we're going to have it again where gold's going to push back. And if I can show you guys here, we'll zoom in a little bit as they're kind of tracking each other. We're going to have, a bounce back on gold here and lumber is going to continue to fall. How much more is going to be really interesting. You can see the volumes decreasing here as well. But, um, what I'm going to be curious about is how much more this is going to be pushing. Cause if you can see, we've got this as our next support, right? We're about here now and that's at 635 ish 485 was before the holidays. This is where lumber made sense, in my opinion, but that's where most of the, the movement was happening. Um, we've got one more support at 635. We go through that. We're going to get back to a $3, $4 stick. Fingers crossed, I guess. I don't know. So keep that in mind. I'm going to continue to watch this. You are going to start seeing some retail numbers drop dramatically. I know right now you're probably not seeing that. Some stores are showing that, some aren't. It really depends on how far that lumber is going, like we talked about in the last video. Moving lumber is a big business. It's bulky, it's large, and it takes time and infrastructure. Um, all of that goes into the equation at the end of the retail price. It even goes in the equation of the price for me for, as a wholesale buyer. But either way, we got to keep that all in perspective you're going to see more drop here in the next month. Okay. So guys, the ones that are out there looking to like decide on what kind of project to do builders that are out there deciding, is it still worth me bidding jobs? This is where we're going to start seeing those changes. Keep that in mind. Make sure you guys check back in with me. Um, I got Monday and Friday videos still pumping out Wednesday live stream. Go check out builtbybaileys.com for the merch. If you like this video, hit that thumbs out. On, hit that thumbs up on the way out. I really appreciate you guys. Um, hopefully, this answers some more questions. And again, keep in mind, lumber's still going down. Okay, so stay positive, keep it up, and most importantly, keep building. You can see the world the way it really is.